stop by this small Christian museum in South Dakota, and the vibe inside was pretty eerie. I'm not judging anybody's beliefs here, but it was a creationist museum, and it was filled with mannequins that moved by themselves, and <laughs> let me tell you, it gave me a weird vibe. Top 3 Freak Shows, Part 2. Number 3, Elastic Man. Felix Worley suffered from Ehlers Daniels Syndrome, which caused him to have unusually stretchy skin. He performed at Barnum and Bailey's, and aside from stretchy skin, he led a pretty average life, unlike Number 2, Elephant Man. He was rejected by his parents, and forced to make money selling his face and dignity to the freak show. Though time constraints limit me from telling you his whole backstory, he's the poster boy for a sad freak show life. Abused, never loved, touched by a woman once, and died in his sleep from his deformities. Number 1, Lobster Boy. Well known from AHS freak show, his genetic condition, ectrodactyly, caused his fingers and toes to fuse together, forming lobster-like claws. He ended up becoming a raging alcoholic from being an outcast since birth, and in the end, murdering his daughter's fiancé. This strange book belongs in a museum, but before it goes anywhere, I wanted to show it to you. It looks like a regular antique book until you open it. Whoever owns it in the past used it as a scrapbook, but instead of family photos, it contains macabre imagery, images of torture devices, poetry, human hair, and medical advertisements. The owner also decided to clip news articles for murders and bizarre injuries, and they saved a lot of obituaries. I just love to imagine a strange young person living on a farm and saving all of the curious things in their secret book. For those wondering, it was found in a farmhouse in Indiana, Pennsylvania, and contains a lot of history for that area. In the Victorian era, it wasn't uncommon to take a lock of your friend's hair as a token of friendship and save it on a book like this. I hope you enjoyed this book. This is Bella Lugosi's Haunted Mirror. Now, if you aren't familiar with Bella Lugosi, who was the original Dracula, he is also deep into the occult. And after his death, a man named Frank moved into his home, and he was brutally murdered right in front of this mirror. That murder remains unsolved. The only witness to the crime was the mirror itself. Now, this was inherited to Frank's niece. Her and her family suffered negative effects, such as never feeling like they were alone. I was also a dark figure reach out to this mirror and attack them specifically around the neck. Have you ever looked at it? Once, for about half a second, my experience was extremely negative. What happened? The reflection of the room disappeared. My reflection disappeared just with the darkness, like I was looking oh into God. a well. I have watched God. multiple guests pass out from this mirror, get nauseous, throw up, and scratches appear on their faces in front of this mirror. We don't tell you that it's optional to try to hype you up. Sure. We're trying to warn you. Welcome back to the museum. These handmade African carvings were given to a young couple for their housewarming gift. They place them on their fireplace mantle to only wake up the next morning and find that they had switched spots on their own. Now that's creepy. Follow for more haunted stories. This is the National Museum of Singapore and it is the most haunted museum in Singapore. This is because people have felt unnatural forces at the National Museum of Singapore's Victorian-style staircase, which is regarded as the most haunted place in the museum. Plus, people have said while they were going down the Victorian-style staircase at the National Museum of Singapore, said that they have been tripped or stopped by an unseen force. Plus, it is said that the National Museum of Singapore is also haunted by the museum's former director, Carl Alexander Gibson Hall, whose death was regarded as a suicide. So, do you think that the National Museum of Singapore is haunted? Write your answer in the comments. Welcome to New Orleans, a town of much mysticism and voodoo. I'm Bloody Mary. Voodoo Queen in New Orleans tradition today and Mambo Asagwe too. And also joke about being related to half the ghosts and hey, maybe it's true. There is a connection. Yesteryear people would have went knocking on our door and hey, maybe they come knock on mine today. Voodoo Queen Marie Laveau is my spirit guide and she's a spirit that, oh, kind of still wanders all through this town. She's a patron saint over in New Orleans and uh, she still she still does her hoodoo too. Anyway, across the street my grandma, great grandma, great great grandma lived and now I'm just a little bit down the way, past Congo Square, down to the right. Come see me. So. Scariest things in Zach Baggins Haunted Museum. 
Ghost Adventure star Zach Baggins owns the Haunted Museum in Las Vegas, Nevada, and it's home to some of the most haunted items in the world. Peggy the Doll. Peggy the Doll is said to be possessed by an impish spirit. I will not be showing a picture of her, as it is said that looking at her, even in pictures and videos, will make you very sick. There have been 80 reported cases of nausea, headaches, chest pains, and one woman even saying that the doll gave her a heart attack. The Devil's Rocking Chair. Formerly owned by Ed and Lorraine Warren, this chair was the site of the exorcism of David Gladsell, and it is said that several people saw the beast sitting in this chair. At one point, Zack had to close this attraction due to heightened paranormal activity. The Cauldron. Once owned by serial killer Ed Gein, the cauldron was said to be found on his property filled with human remains. Previous owners have said that the cauldron is filled with dark energy. Lugosi's Mirror. Bela Lugosi was an American-Hungarian actor who played Dracula in 1931. It is believed that Lugosi was into the occult and used this mirror for rituals. Shortly after Zack acquired the mirror, the basement that he was keeping it in flooded for no apparent reason. Here in Monroe, Connecticut, in the basement of this ordinary home, lies Warren's Occult Museum, a terrifying collection of the most haunted and cursed artifacts on Earth, and a dream visit for those who love nightmares. Since 1952, Lorraine and Ed Warren have been known around the world as two of the most prominent experts on the supernatural. Their real-life adventures in the occult have inspired movies, from The Conjuring to the Amityville Horror, collectively grossing over one billion dollars. The Warrens devoted their lives to rooting out evil that defies science, and along the way, have collected the world's most cursed objects. Tooth Search Group continues to look after the dangerous artifacts the Warrens This is the real Annabelle doll. That is the real conjuring mirror. And these are other haunted occult objects from the Warren Museum. Would you ever want to stand in front of them as I did? Okay, you can do this. Just ignore the statues. They're not demons. It's fine. You got this. You got this. Oh God, oh God. You're not gonna come alive, right? Right, you're all just standing and chilling, right? Right, it's fine, this is fine. Just a few demons, it's fine. Oh cool, they reflect in that. That's, that's cool, that's cool, this is fine. I'm fine, it's fine. Welcome back to the museum. This is Jolene. She came from a children's daycare center in Connecticut. We got a call with reports that this doll was terrorizing the children by whispering to them. In the morning, staff would come in and find her on the floor. Now that's creepy. Places you should visit if you enjoy all things spooky. The Museum of Death. The Museum of Death, located in New Orleans, is a monument to all things scary and disturbing. The gift shop alone is too disturbing for some people to handle. The employees even keep a tally behind the counter of who's passed out or thrown up that day. The museum is home to several serial killer artifacts, such as letters from Jeffrey Dahmer, several paintings by John Wayne Gacy, hair and evidence from the O.J. Simpson trial, and several Manson family artifacts. However, the exhibits are really the claim to fame. They have real shrunken heads, body parts in jars, exhibits on cannibalism, and suicide machines. And perhaps most disturbing of all, you can make your way into the back into a small theater where hours upon hours of real-life death caught on camera is played uncensored. The point of the museum, according to the founders, is to show people death and make them grateful to be alive. This place is not for the weak of heart. But hey, if you pass out, you get a free t-shirt that says, I passed out at the Museum of Death and lived to talk about it. The Weirdest Museums Ever Part 2. The Vent Haven Museum of Ventriloquism in Kentucky, containing over 900 figures from 20 different countries. This is the world's only ventriloquist museum. Personally, this one creeps me the fuck out. I've seen the movie Dead Silence. You will not catch me here. What about you?